We stand firm, calling to Allah all the time. We let him know, bang, bang, cause it's our time. Sorry, I'm a bit confused. What on earth do you look so grossed out for? On atheism, there's nothing wrong with drinking your dad's sperm. You don't believe me? Look, let's break it down. There is no consequences, morally speaking, according to you guys, because not harming anyone and there's no risk. And secondly speaking, sperm's got nutritional value. So go drink your dad's sperm, man. What are you waiting for? But you're not going to, are you? But why? I can understand how you're quite confused right now because your worldview should make you feel comfortable with drinking sperm. But hold up, you feel like, uh, that's gross, I don't want to drink my dad's sperm. Then could there be something wrong with your worldview? Let's discuss that. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ba'd. Okay, so we have morals. We have good, we have bad. We have what we ought to do, we have what we ought not to do. Where did our morals come from? They didn't come from nothing, did they? Because look, we're smart now. We're not going to behave stupid anymore. We're going to appreciate that things don't come from nothing. But we're not going to turn a blind eye to them because they exist. They're in our faces. We use them each and every single day. Okay, good. So at least we're on the same wavelength. Okay, what are the explanations that atheists used to give for where our morals came from? Number one, evolution. But then we came to realize just by using our brains a teeny tiny, teeny, teeny, teeny bit that evolution doesn't care about moral value, it cares about survival value. For example, the white nurse shark, when it wants to procreate, does it go and smoothly just walk over to the female white nurse shark and just chirps it a little bit like, what's going on baby, you wanna hit the pad and basically get jiggy? No, it forcefully copulates. In other words, it rapes. If our morals come from the exact same sociological, biological process that facilitates those morals for that white nurse shark, then what makes us so special that when we rape, it's wrong? No. If that's where our morals come from, rape, murder, theft, all these things, at the most you could say are socially unconventional. The same way it is socially unconventional for a woman to wear Ronald McDonald lipstick when she goes to the club, or for a man to sit at a dinner table and fart, or for a guy to go play a game of football with his tuxedo on. You can't say these things are evil, they're wrong, he ought not to do this, or she ought not to do that. The most you can say is, I wouldn't, but if you really want to do that, then go for it. I'm not going to murder him, but if you want to murder him, that's up to you. To each their own. Potato, potato, tomato, tomato. But we realize that that doesn't work and evolution basically leaves us with that. So evolution flies out the window. The second explanation that we have is 
wait for it, social pressure. But social pressure basically means that we believe things are good and bad, morally speaking, on the basis of what society tells us. But if that's the case, then that means you have to accept that when Hitler and his Nazis were doing what they were doing to the Jews, in other words, putting them in concentration camps, gas chambers with Zyklon B, when they were doing that at the time, because social pressure made them feel that it was the norm, morally speaking, it was the thing that they ought to do. That means you have to admit that that at the time, there was nothing wrong with what Hitler was doing. But nobody's going to do that because it was wrong then and it was wrong now. So what happens to social pressure? We kick it to the curb. So what's the explanation that people like Sam Harris put forth today? Consequentialism. What is consequentialism? A very crude understanding is that basically we look at the consequences of our actions and if the consequences bring about good, then that's something that's morally good. And if they bring about something bad, then that's morally bad. So that's basically how we do it. Well, in light of that, there's nothing wrong with drinking your dad's sperm because the consequences are actually beneficial. There's nutritional value and there's no risk. No one's going to get harmed. Your dad's basically going to have a good bash. He's going to enjoy a nice orgasm and you're going to enjoy some nice nutritional value. So the benefits outweigh the losses. So go and drink your dad's sperm. Don't be such a hypocrite. Go and basically have intimate relationships with your mum and your sister because there's nothing wrong with it. That's why people like Lawrence Krauss said, rationally speaking, I don't see something wrong with incest. Why is incest wrong? It's, uh, it's not clear to me that it's wrong. Go and basically engage in paedophilic acts. That's why Richard Dawkins says, I don't see there to be a problem with things like mild paedophilia. Of course there's a problem. Let me give you a very vivid, crude example. Forgive me for painting this picture, but sometimes you need to really drive the point home by taking outside the box. Here's the example. On consequentialism, according to Sam Harris's morality, according to Professor Krauss, Richard Dawkins, the leading atheist of the world, according to their morality, there's nothing wrong with you basically lying a one-year-old baby in front of you and basically masturbating over it. Because the baby is not going to remember the traumatic experience because he's only one or she's only one years old. And you are going to enjoy basically a nice session. Very creepy, disgusting. Should be put in jail, locked away, slapped in the face. But on your morality as an atheist who rejects God, there's nothing wrong with that. But now here's the thing. I know you are decent human beings, right? We're human beings. And I know you find a problem with all the examples that I've given. Because you're not weird. We have the same blood running through our veins, the same head, the same brain inside of it, the same consciousness. We have the same morality. So I'm not having a go at you, I'm just trying to make you understand how crude this understanding of the world is from an atheistic perspective. So then what is our explanation and understanding of where our morals came from? My dear beloved friends, brothers and sisters, the only explanation for where our morals came from is that they are grounded and anchored and based and founded upon a higher moral agent that instilled them to us because society doesn't dictate them, evolution sure as hell doesn't, and consequences of our actions, rational thought process like that sure as hell doesn't. The only option we're left is that Allah instilled these morals inside of us from when we were born. I leave you with that, please. Accept Allah as your one creator, master of the heavens and the earth. Or at least come to appreciate that there is a divine there. That's half the job done already. But if you continue to reject that, then please, give your dad a bottle and tell him to have a bash. And you enjoy a nice drink. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Share this video, like this video. Brother Imran ibn Mansur.